Don't touch that snooze button. Just turn up Good Morning Nebraska. With Scott, Gary, Emmy, Rosie, and don't forget Lucy, Chris is back too, along with a cast of characters from Nebraska. It's Good Morning Nebraska. Welcome to Nebraska's 2024 primary debates only on Good Morning Nebraska. This year we have all five congressional seats on the ballot and we have all five incumbent imbeciles debating their top Republican challengers. But first let's let our self-described experts comment on their top issues for 2024. This election will decide between tyranny and liberty. I'd like someone to help me find my dentures. We need more equality so grown men can participate in women's sports. We need more flip-flopping on issues that really don't matter. The secret of power elite with a globalist agenda who are conspiring to achieve world domination and rule the world through an authoritarian one-world government. We also brought back Pian for his unintentional comedic input. I'm just glad no one knows I peed my pants last time. Well now everybody knows. Up next are the candidates' opening statements. Welcome to the Nebraska Primary Debates 2024. We'd like to introduce the incumbent imbeciles and let them tell you what you should think are the most important issues. First up is Cheap Tricks Ricketts, the lying, cheating, two-faced, white trash globalist wannabe stooge. Hey guys, so like, America's at a crossroads and you can either believe your eyes and use common sense, or you can listen my bull and get used like rats for scientific and psychological experimentation. Next is Dirty Donnie Rotten Daka DEI Bacon, the Israel first and America last phony dishonorable traitor. I'm all about doing the right thing for Nebraska and that's sending all your money to Israel and Ukraine. Then there is Debbie Downer Fitcher, the old slow-talking, no-thinking, insane windbag. National security is my first priority and that's why I leave the borders open so I always have that problem to waste money on. We also have Frivolous Mike Flood, the foolish, clueless, oblivious chowderhead. Kind of a nerd. And last and least, yo, Adrian Smith, the worthless, weak, wimpy gimp. <laughs> well, folks, those are the incumbent imbeciles that have been making decisions for you in Washington, D.C., and it's no wonder we have so many problems. Welcome back to the 2024 Nebraska primary debates, and now the opening statements from the incumbent imbeciles starting with Cheap Tricks Ricketts. Hey guys, so like it's totally super cool to lie to your faces and talk down to all of you little people while I sell out the state and the nation. I am better than all of you and I know what is best for my power, money, and ego. I also know what's best for your individual health and I will make those decisions for you and you will be getting more vaccinations from my big pharma business partners. I will continue to spend your tax dollars on manufactured foreign wars and fake foreign aid while getting backdoor deals and kickbacks. I'm also working hard to leave our border wide open and flood the nation and state with illegals to replace all of you who don't vote for me and the globalist agenda. I promise to repeat globalist talking points no matter how stupid I sound, and then at the end of my statement say, there's no place like Nebraska. Well there you have it folks, the opening statement from Cheap Tricks Ricketts and he really thinks he's right about everything no matter what everyone else says. We'll be right back with commentary from our expert analysts and peon too. <laughs> Welcome back to the 2024 Nebraska primary debates. We just heard from Cheap Tricks Ricketts and if you missed his opening statement here's a recap, and then, replies from our experts. I am better than all of you. Someone's sure high on his horse, like always. He's high on something and it ain't no horse. He's high on a big pile of horse hockey. I love horses, especially my little pony, Princess Twilight Sparkle. He's just confident in his bad decision making ability. Every bad decision is one step closer to a good decision. Well then he has a lot of walking to do. Someone has to make decisions even if they are the worst decision. I'll always make the best decisions I can to benefit me and my globalist business partners at the expense of the people in Nebraska because there's no place like Nebraska. He just saying there's no place like Nebraska because that's what Nebraskans like to hear. It's like Dorothy Lynch for the years. I bathe in Dorothy Lynch but it clogs the drain. But he doesn't mean any of it. Yeah. Well there's one thing you can count on no matter what he says or lies about. He'll keep saying there's, there's no, no place, place like, like Nebraska. Nebraska. Welcome back to the 2024 Nebraska primary debates and now another opening statement from an incumbent imbecile, the old slow mindless windbag, Debbie Downer Fisher. I'll never be too old to be a senator. She talks slow because she doesn't have anything to say. She talks slow because she can't remember what to say. She talks slow because she's too old and her mind is gone. Age is just a number, but I can't count that high. She ages like scrap iron left out in the rain. I can't wait to be as old as her because you don't get in trouble anymore for pooping in your pants. She's so old, she watches the History Channel to see if she's on it. She's so old, she walked out of a museum and the alarm went off. She's so old, her birthday candles cost more than the birthday cake. 
She's so old. When she was in high school, they didn't have history class. She's so old. Her birth certificate is written on a stone tablet. She's so old. When she was a kid, she had a pet dinosaur. Well, there you have it, folks. Debbie Downer is really old and out of touch with Nebraskans and reality. <laughs> Welcome back to the 2024 Nebraska primary debates and now we have to listen to another opening statement from one of the incumbent imbeciles, the foolish clueless oblivious chowderhead, frivolous Mike Flood. So what's the one thing you want to tell the audience? To be honest, kind of a nerd. More like a fat nerd. Fat goober. Fat dweeb. Fat doofus. Fat is fabulous. If I was that fat, I'd never have to bring my water wings to the pool because I'd be my own personal flotation device. He's so fat I took a picture of him last Christmas and it's still printing. He's so fat he's got more chins than a Hong Kong phone book. He's so fat, when he fell no one laughed, but the ground started cracking up. He's so fat, when he goes camping bears hide their food. He's so fat, when he steps on the scale it says to be continued. He's so fat he got a parking ticket for standing in the crosswalk. Well there you have it folks, the fat and frivolous Mike Flood is a failure. <laughs> Welcome back to the 2024 Nebraska primary debates and here's another opening statement from another incumbent imbecile. Now we have to hear from the worthless weak wimpy gimp, yo Adrian Smith. Do we even have to talk about this guy? When will he just go away? He's a waste of space. Sometimes a waste of space is just what is needed in the corner. Is it me or is he just talking gibberish? Gibberish is my second language and miming is my first. He's so stupid when he hears it's chilly outside he gets a bowl. He's so stupid he got locked in a grocery store and starved. He's so stupid he put his hands in his pockets so he couldn't catch a cold. He's so stupid he got hit by a cup and told the cops he was mugged. He's so stupid he tried to climb Mountain Dew. He's so stupid he wore a coat to Dairy Queen because of all the blizzards. Yo Adrian Smith fails to impress anyone again and all of these incumbent imbeciles have failed as representatives of Nebraska but have succeeded as terrible human beings. <laughs> Welcome back to the 2024 Nebraska primary debates and now the opening statement from the incumbent imbecile, Donnie Rotten Bacon. I'm about doing the right thing for Nebraska and the right thing is sending all your money to Israel and Ukraine. I was the one who kept Nebraskans safe by wasting billions on masks and special shots for the made-up national emergency. I'm keeping an eye on Nebraskans by passing legislation that allows for warrantless unconstitutional spying on you, but keeping the southern border wide open for illegals and paying for invading enemy soldiers' hotel rooms. I served Nebraskans when I climbed the career ladder in the military on my knees and helped turn the armed forces into a gay joke. Recently, my partners and I disrespected Nebraska and Memorial Park with our presence when we held an open to the public campaign event that no one attended, except for over 100 Nebraska LGBTQ plus leaders who all came together to endorse me. I'm all about bringing Nebraskans together and doing the right thing for Israel, Ukraine, and everyone except Nebraska. Well, there you have it, folks. Donnie Rotten says he's all about Nebraska, except insert the word selling out, between about, and Nebraska. We'll be right back with our experts' reaction. <laughs> Welcome back to the 2024 Nebraska primary debates. We just heard from Donnie Rotten Bacon, and here's a recap. I'm all about bringing Nebraskans together and doing the right thing for Israel, Ukraine, and everyone except Nebraska. And now expert commentary. It sounds like he's working for everyone except Nebraska. Then he lies and says he's all for Nebraska. He's a talented and gifted liar. Yeah. Sometimes the truth hurts like when people describe the way I look. I'm just doing the right thing for Nebraska so that Israel and Ukraine can enjoy the good life. He says he's doing the right thing, but it's always the wrong thing. If lying is wrong, then he don't want to be right. I rely on my faith. The faith that I will keep getting away with all my lying, cheating, and stealing as long as I keep smiling and saying that it's all for the people in Nebraska. Saying ain't doing. And what he's doing benefits everyone but Nebraskans. Lying is bad, bro. I just wish people would lie to me when they tell me how I look. Well, there you go, folks. And the one thing everyone can agree on is that Dirty Dotty Rotten Daka DEI Bacon is a lying, dishonorable traitor who was as phony as a $3 bill. <laughs> What do you think about foreigners and the Chinese owning Nebraska farmland? I'll stop the sale of farmland to foreigners and the Chinese. Furthermore, the land that they do own, we're going to confiscate back and give back to Nebraskans. That's the right thing to do for Nebraskans. And them foreigners talk funny. Yeah, if the Chinese can't farm here, then what am I going to eat at Panda Express? Hey guys, it's like totally super cool that my foreign friends and Chinese business partners are getting Nebraska land for such a good price. As governor, I was able to manipulate the deals so I could rip off Nebraska family farmers. 
As senator, I'm gonna try to sell off the rest of Nebraska, but only if I can get in on the action, because it's fun for me to ruin people's lives and make money. And also there's no place like Nebraska. Money isn't everything, until you're a dollar short. Someone's looking out for the state and someone's looking out for their petty and pathetic self. I just wish they could make scarecrows less creepy. Two different viewpoints, keep the farms for Nebraskans or sell the farms to China. Do you think we should close the border or keep it open and welcome enemy soldiers, cartel gangbangers, and jihad terrorists? One of the primary responsibilities of the federal government is to protect and defend the borders of this country and the citizens therein. It's never been optional in this country. We have got to close down that border. If that means shutting down the government using the power of the purse to do so, it's time that we get the federal government's attention and force them to do their job. I'm doing the right thing for Nebraska by keeping the border wide open and paying for all the terrorists to come to Nebraska so we can pay for their hotel rooms. It's all about bringing Nebraskans together so we can lose our jobs to illegals, get robbed by illegals, and pay for illegal anchor babies. Well there you have it folks, close the border or live next to terrorists who are going to kill you. Do you think parents should be involved in their kids' education, or do you want subversive libtards screwing up your kids' brains? So I believe parents need to know exactly what's in their kids' curriculum and should decide what's in their curriculum. They should be in charge of school boards, not the liberal bureaucrats. Parents, you need to know that in the United States Senate, I'll fight for you and your kids every day to give you the freedoms that our Constitution gives you to teach your kids the way that you want to. So like, hey guys, it's totally super cool to get your kids in school so I can get libtard teachers to indoctrinate your kids on the New World Order agenda. I plan to help the corrupt U.S. Department of Indoctrination block you from any involvement so we can turn your kids into commie freaks because there's no place like Nebraska. Well, there you have it, folks. The choice between parental involvement or commie libtard indoctrination. <laughs> Should we balance the budget or spend like drunken sailors on other countries' problems? So it's undeniable that we're heading in the wrong direction. What we've got to do is send individuals to D.C. that are more concerned about the next generation than their next election. And I can guarantee you that if a budget hits my desk and it has year-over-year -year spending that has increased, I'm a no vote. We've got to work towards a balanced budget. I'm all about doing the right thing for Nebraskans, and the right thing to do is borrow more money and go deeper in debt so we can pay for Israel's annexation of Gaza and prolong Ukraine's lost cause against Russia. I'm bringing Nebraskans together so we can pay for other countries' borders and national defense, while the U.S. border is open to all the people fleeing wars that this corrupt U.S. government created. Well, there you go, folks. We can stop overspending or we can waste all our money on Israel, Ukraine, and every other country in the world. What do you think about the weaponization of the corrupt DOJ by the criminal Biden administration? None of our political leaders or elected leaders in Nebraska, certainly none of our U.S. senators have the political will or the courage to stand up against the weaponization of our DOJ, against a former president, or to stand up for our Constitution. This stuff only happens in third world countries. He's going to stop the weaponization. Dementia Joe's DOJ is out of control. So like, hey guys, I'm totally for the weaponization of the DOJ and any way the government can punish anyone who's against the new world order that I'm trying to join by selling out America and double-crossing Nebraskan. I hope I can weaponize the justice system to go after anyone who doesn't think I'm super cool because there's no place like Nebraska. He's going to continue the corruption. I would like to order a new world too. Does it come with a toy? Well, there you have it, folks. The choice between truth and justice or a corrupt and crazy banana republic. <laughs> Welcome back to the 2024 Nebraska primary debates, and now the closing statements from the incumbent imbeciles. Hey guys, so like, I'm totally gonna fundamentally transform Nebraska into a third world whole, because there's no place like Nebraska. I'm all about doing the right thing for Nebraska, and that means Israel and Ukraine will be getting all your tax money. You don't need a functioning brain to be a senator kind of a nerd. Well, there you have it, folks. Now you have to decide between the top Republican challengers or the incumbent imbeciles who are stupid and weak, corrupt, lying frauds who have made everybody's life worse. If you vote for them, you'll get more of the SOS. They will sell you down the river. Yeah, they are a chance not worth taking. They are even too douchey for me. Whoops, I just peed my pants again. Fox Fake News is next. This is Fox Fake News. Who am bad? Zelensky good. You're listening to Fox Fake News.